Hello, good people. Today we are talking about eGPU setup in 2025, and I've been using eGPU with my Lenovo Legion Go uh, for some time now, and I've been enjoying this setup, but I gotta tell you straight out of the gate, you know, that it's not my favorite thing, and it's not because I don't know how to use it, um, but it takes a lot of time and effort to make it actually work. And across whole internet, specifically on YouTube, you'll find tons of video about eGPU setups, but most of these videos, uh, you know, like people avoid or kind of not mention some of the important things that in real life you, as a potential user of eGPU setup or already using eGPU, maybe didn't realize when you purchased this kind of modular setup. Let me explain some of the key challenges that you will find with eGPU setup that I couldn't find anywhere in one video on the internet. So I, I'm hoping that this video will be unique for you. So let me know in the comments below if this is if some of the information you find valuable. And of course, don't forget to leave thumbs up. Now, let's focus on the uh, positive sides first, and then we'll talk about negative sides and challenges. Positive side is that obviously it's modular and upgradable, which is kind of a myth because you usually end up with one GPU for many years or, you know, some piece of that hardware will become obsolete sooner than later. But it's upgradable, that's a fact, okay? Now, one of the feature is that it's uh, kind of portable. So, I mean, so a GPU setup is not portable because most of people would not travel because it's too complex, but you can have a portable device like, you know, handheld gaming PC or thin and light laptop that you enjoy using in your office or on your holidays for watching videos. And then, and then in home, you have a powerhouse that you can edit videos or game or do something of more complex tasks. Now, it of course gives you boost in gaming. That's what most of eGPU users will use it for. So if you want to play some uh, AAA titles, so-called, and of course it will give you more frames. And that's all true. However, there are some limitations and some challenges in real life that you just have to know about. And there's the cone section, so the downside of whole setup. First of all, it takes forever to make this setup actually work. I believe maybe with Asus, uh, you know, Rock Alley or Rock Alley X, it's a slightly easier process, but with Lenovo Legion Go, it's, it's a little bit of a nightmare. So you, first you have to fall, fiddle with TDP, you have to fiddle with resolutions, with all this setup inside of the handheld. Uh, then you plug in your, your you know, <laughs> you plug in your uh, eGPU, then it outputs to, to, your, uh, to your monitor and there's a lot of things that can actually go wrong. So until you hit this sweet spot, it takes a lot of effort, trust me. It sounds very easy and especially if you look at videos like ETA Prime, uh, he's, he's wonderful, I love his channel but he, and very inspiring, but honestly like, all the things he shows uh, on his videos takes a lot of time and effort to set up at your home. So trust me on that one, you'll spend a lot of time fiddling with all the you know settings to make it actually work. Some of the things work better actually in real life that I thought, like plugging it in and plugging it out, disconnecting and connecting, works actually pretty fine. And um, my GPU setup was easily detecting the external GPU without any bigger issues. However, you have to remember that specifically with Lenovo Legion Go, but I heard from uh, ASUS users as well, that it's very easy to overheat whole setup. So if you think that you can plug in your Lenovo Legion Go to the you know, power source, then plug in your eGPU setup, and you know, put your Lenovo Legion Go on maximum TDP, like, like you can set up, I don't know, 30 watts, and everything will work just fine and you will get the best framers out there. That is not true. Actually, this device will still overheat very easily, uh, actually easier than without the GPU. Of course, you get better frame rates, but then you get black screen very, very fast. So that's a big downside. So you have to limit your TDP. You have to still keep your device, your main device here as cool as possible. And yes, you will get extra frame rates. You will get playable frame rates in higher resolutions, but still it's not what you imagine that you can just put it all, <clears throat> you know, to the maximum settings, of course, not the game itself, but, you know, even device itself, and it will perform perfectly. That is not the case. 
But please keep watching because one of the main reasons why I did not actually like eGPU setup that much is uh, coming in the end. So please make sure to watch. Now, one of the things that I uh, kind of stopped loving my eGPU setup and is actually the main reason why I stopped loving it is not many YouTubers mentioned that. And let me put it uh, like, let me make it clear for you, okay? It is this idea that I can connect my portable device, my handheld PC, my handheld gaming console to a eGPU setup. I can do edit video editing, I can do some uh, heavier gaming, and then I can unplug and continue my game like on the go, for example, on my, uh, you know, terrace. That sounds very tempting and sounds like a perfect situation and uh, it can, uh, it sounds like, you know, like a Nintendo Switch killer, so, you know, docked and docked so easily. So you think that eGPU setup will give you similar type of experience, but far from that. First of all, you have to mess with resolution. Let's say your monitor is 2K or 4K, and then when you unplug it, you can you have to switch in the game back to 1080p. Of course, some games will detect it automatically, but some are not. So this is a huge mess. Now, second thing is, let's say you were playing on eGPU, let's say Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and you enjoyed everything in a glorious 2K and like medium to high details. Perfect, right? Then you switch it back to your handheld mode and you have to go to settings again, then turn every setting down to low, then you have to decrease the resolution and yada, 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 yada. And it makes it in, you know, on a daily basis, like for me as a dad of two boys, as a guy running company and, you know, being busy basically, that is a real pain. And trust me on that one, it, it again, as I said in the, in the beginning, it sounds easy, but it's not as easy as you think in real life because some games will cooperate beautifully, some games are not cooperating beautifully. And I'm planning on making a video about my renewed love for Switch 1, the original one. Of course, I have the OLED version, not the, uh, you know, uh, the first one, but I'm actually planning to make a video about my, you know, uh, love revival for Switch 1 that is still uh, so convenient as a handheld console in comparison with handheld consoles that are available on the market right now that are actually getting hot very fast, getting uh, loud very fast, and eGPU setup makes it even more complex and sometimes more complicated. So are there benefits? Yes, if you're a tech enthusiast and you just want this eGPU setup and you want to fiddle with the settings and you actually enjoy the process, that's something for you. If you want this, you know, F FPS boost, of course it will give you that, but it will also give you a lot of headache. Let me know in the comments below what you think about my eGPU observations and about my real life experience um, of working with eGPU setup and playing with eGPU setup. And let me know if you are planning to have eGPU setup yourself or you sold one and what was your experience. So let me know uh, in the comments below. Once again, please leave thumbs up. That helps a lot. Subscribe. That helps a lot as well. And I see you guys in the next video recording. Cheers.